Anyway, how are you? <laughs> I'm well, thank you, Sam. It's been uh, it's been a big day for both of us. Um, not just because we both have nine to five jobs and, and have to work. This is our work. This, this is, is our hobby. This is our play. This is our passion. Yeah. No. Uh, and also because you and I essentially spent the whole day watching the Super Bowl. Not if my manager asks. No, not legally. No. Um, I also wasn't sitting on my computer trying to buy scissor tickets. Um, which hypothetically, I, if you if you were to have done that, how do you think you would have gone? Uh, at first, shit house. Right. Nearly put my fist through Ticket Tech's website. Nice. Um, through my own computer, which would have been detrimental to the uh, the HR uh, manager and to the ticket buying experience. I and imagine. to the ticket buying experience. However, I did end up buying an extraordinarily expensive ticket, mm. as that was the only one available. I couldn't even get a singular ticket in the GA standing. Damn. But I could get the uh, the VIP tickets. Right. Well, hopefully that means a uh, a good a good live music experience. You'd hope so. Better than the ticket buying experience, potentially. Uh, well, after the ticket buying experience, I I will be eating nothing but uh, baked beans and noodles for the next fortnight. But you know that you it's can't you can't buy make, isn't it? you can't buy memories. No, no, so, you can't. Um, I can really try and remember the feeling of my wallet uh, dropping weight rapidly. Saying, thinning. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had deep pockets and short arms, but yeah. I don't. You've got deep pockets and expensive tickets to buy. Well, it's the price you pay for love, isn't it? Look, we've, we've talked about it before, the, the reason that tickets are so expensive in, uh, in Australia, but we, I think we need to get back into it one time. Yeah, I think it's a rabbit hole we need to go down because I am going to rip Ticket Tech one. We need to talk the economics of ticketing. Coming for you, oh. Mr. Ticket Tech. Mr. Tech. Mr. Tech. His friends call him T. <laughs> Tick, um, ticks even. Look, I'm going to... Anyway, that's not... It. We were talking Super Bowl before We were talking I Super Bowl. Cut you off. Um, just very broadly, what do you think? Of, what were your thoughts on the game? I don't know a thing about NFL, nor do I pretend to. I put it on because it's a grand final. Uh, and I like grand Loves finals. a big dance. Loves a big dance. Couldn't have told you what bloody went on. Yep. I don't get into the NBA or the baseball because mm-hmm. there's that many games in it. Yep. I mean, you could be watching game four to seven and... Yep. I mean, the, the NFL, there are a lot of games anyway. Like, you, those play, the playoffs go for a while. They do. Well, five minutes in the fourth quarter is three hours of viewing time. That's, yeah, so that's true. It you, did, you're getting your, your bang for buck. Well, I started it at 10 a.m. and mm. I didn't finish it until 3.30. It's a lot of... I mean, hypothetically, if you if you were watching it. Well, I was watching it in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> during meetings. Yeah, yeah. I did actually... You know, no, I'm not going to say that. Just for legal Just reasons. Just for legal shouldn't. reasons. I do really put my head down at work. Yep. Um, and I think my work reflects that. Look, my boss already knows that I was watching mine, watching it, so... Same. That's great. Um, I had it on my screen. Yeah, right. Well, Didn't uh, hide the fact. <laughs> I... Look, we're not a sports podcast, so let's not get too no, far. No, so in let's it, not break into the game. Let's look, t- I'm disappointed let's talk half the, time. Disappointed the Niners lost. Aren't we that. all? Um, as a boy who likes a San Franciscan team. Um, well, I think the world just didn't want more Taylor Swift content. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, but if anything, you're a legend. I didn't want no. I didn't want any more Patrick Mahomes content. But that's separate. But he threw the touchdown. It was a shit touchdown. That yeah, last but Taylor one. Swift didn't throw the touchdown. She's just. Maybe she inspired She's a the wag. boys. Because Travis She's Kelsey... She's a wife or girlfriend. Anyway. Yeah, let's chat halftime show. Usher. Is there vodka in there? There better be. Otherwise, they, she, she, you can blame it on that. Um, I drink on the job. The, Usher's halftime show. Usher. Uh, bit meh. Bit meh. Okay. In hindsight. In hindsight. We were commentating the whole way we through. Were, on we our, were live texting. On our messaging platforms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want Max's number, it is in the caption below. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no denying the man can perform and can sing. Mm. He's th- got pipes. The man's got pipes and Great dance pipes. moves. Yeah. I just... There were sound issues early. Mm-hmm. You could either hear him or hear the backing track. You mm-hmm. could never hear both. Yep. Uh, shout out to the special guests. Alicia Keys. Yep. Red Foo. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's Luda. It was Luda I was just wondering they didn't yell Luda. Ludicrous. Uh, Lil John. Lil John, yep. Turned up for turn down. For what? And I'll tell you what, he was sewn into that leather. Yeah, he was. There was no getting him out of it. No. Couldn't even get him out with a pair of scissors. No, and he had some solid, I'd say, like two inch Cuban heels. 
Well, when you're five foot four, you've yeah. got to make yourself look a little bit more. Uh, he just wanted to be John, you know, yeah. just once. Just he wanted, just wanted to, be John. to be average John. Just, but he was still little. Yeah. And uh, look, I just think Usher's music, it's inoffensive. It's, it was good in its time. I just don't think it's aged. I just think the way music's progressed, it doesn't quite stack up the same way. Okay. So for me, like there was nothing wrong with it. I just thought it was a bit. It didn't didn't jerk McGurkin, you know. Sure. I you would like it because you're allergic to. No, well, I thought it started like pretty it shakily, and I thought it was. I was like, oh no, this we could be mm. in for an absolute. It could train be wreck Fergie here. national anthem at Ooh, the NBA All Stars game. No good. Um, but and it, I would say up until Alicia Keys's part, I was clenching teeth. Yeah, it was. I, I didn't have lucky. You had some chewing gum, but yeah, but the back end, yeah, bangers. You shouldn't talk about Alicia like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, damn, she was keen it up. But um, the the back end of the performance was fucking out of hand. <laughs> that, that, Omg into uh, burn into um. You got there, son. Into yeah, like all oh, huge hits. And Crunk is back. We say that like ironic, like we kind of are taking the piss, but it actually is back. Like there's been a lot of TikToks I've seen recently where, where people are like back on back into Crunk. Well, you only have to look back as far as Timberland. Bounce by Timberland if you want to get Crunk back. Man, Timberland rules. Timberland genuinely an under like he's got huge hits, obviously huge hits, but an underrated producer in terms of like the Dr. Dre of the modern day. Okay, let's not go that far, but. You know, he doesn't have his own headphones. No, but at the time when, you know, like... He's got um, his own boots, though. He does. Didn't like it. In a, in a time when um, no one does. the Neptunes were a big force, you know, Pharrell was a big producer. Oh, yeah. Um, Timberland at the same time. Like, mm. they were doing some good... That was, like, there's some good creative production for, like, otherwise pretty standard well, R&B. Timberland and Justin Timberlake. Mm, I'm not the biggest JT fan. No, he's a bit hit and miss. He's a bit... He's got, he's got a, just a creepy vibe. Uh, well, I keep looking back. For some reason, my algorithm keeps taking me back to that on-stage moment in the early 2000s where he's like... Oh, I got Joe Jackson's city out. No. Oh. When he's on stage in a bit of a do-rag mm. and he's going, uh, the name's Lek. Tim- Timber Lek. And then he starts beatboxing. And then oh. they pan to uh, Britney Spears... And she's doing this one. You see, they call me Lake. Timber, 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 Lake. The fuck at the. It's the, it's the, it's, it's the bejeweled, duraggy paddy cap for me. It's not great. The it's ever- a, it's over time. I'll tell you that much. Look. If I was a 14-year-old girl in 2001, the loins would probably be stirring looking at Justin Timberlake do that. Yeah. In 2024? Doesn't hold up that great. Not for me. No, yeah, no. Mm, no. However, as a performer, you know, he's, he's got the work to back himself. I, I don't know. I saw him on uh, SNL a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and um, he had one good song and one bad song off his new album. The mm. good song... I don't think it was good because of him. I think it was just a, like a well-produced song and he was happened to be in it. Yes. Like you could have pa- passed it to any... Well, do you think it's a little bit ushery and it's inoffensive? <sighs> Potentially. I think it's just broadly a bit... Meh. I don't know. I think Justin Timberlake, he's still trying to do like a 2007 thing. He's still trying to bring mm. sexy back. And sexy's been brought back. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's what I'm feeling. Anyway. Anyway. We've gone deep on Super Bowl. So... Oh, actually, oh, that reminds me of one thing. The other musical thing that happened during Super Bowl. What was that? Beyonce released two new tracks from an upcoming country album um, oh. as part of a Verizon ad. Yeah, right. Um, and didn't watch that part. I'm not... Uh, on this podcast, I famously said I'm not the biggest Beyonce fan. Like I've said that she's got... She's musically very talented, but it just doesn't produce music that appeals to me, and that's fine. Doesn't appeal to me either. But I'll say, both the country songs are actually pretty banging. They're pretty good. I'm going to have to listen to them. Um, one of them uh, is like a very 
traditional like country yeah. ballad called back 16 Carriages. In the back country, I Pretty dig much. my weed, that sort of vibe. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. And then the other one is like still very country, like in terms of how it's you know produced and sounds, but a lot more like it's just a sort of a fun dancier song that's been put into this country like instrumentation which is kind of cool mm. so yeah a, a, uh, a sneak release from um from Beyonce Beyonce yeah what's her name in real life Beyonce Knowles yeah right anyway <laughs> well, well Beyonce Knowles Carter now I believe oh because it's Jay-Z Carter yep. yep yep the Z stands for Carter Jason Carter yep yep I thought so yep <laughs> well speaking of their love Hey, Valentine's Day is coming up. Valentine's Day is coming. Well, no, Valentine's Day has been true. <clears throat> by the time people have heard this, yes. Correct. Well, by the time people have seen the clip for Valentine's Day, it's probably on Valentine's Day. I'd say, yeah, we can probably make that happen on Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's. Thanks. Happy Valentine's. I'm Day, actually. Sam. I've already got one, but you can be my backup. Oh well. Let's see how it is. Sorry, I was going to put you at the front of the line, but that's fine. no, you weren't. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm not even part of your grooms. It's fine. The groomsmen at your wedding. No one is because I'm not getting married. <laughs> Well, that's probably a a rabbit hole. We'll go down <laughs> off camera. Um, best and worst love songs. Yeah. So I've collected four songs that I think, you know, nails down a chalkboard. Yep. When I hear. Yep. Or they're super cliche, mm-hmm. or they're just generic love songs. Gotcha. It's like the Hallmark Holiday, you know. Yep. 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 And then I've. Sort of found four good love songs in the modern age, not the classics that you see all the time. Yeah. So I just thought we'd rapid fire, you know, tete a tete, if you will. Yeah, whatever that means. I've got three of each, so that's great. I can go if you start and finish. I'll just slot in the middle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start out. Should we go worst first? You're called. You tell me. Maybe to say one, I'll be like, "Is that best or worst?" <laughs> okay. We'll play a guessing game. <laughs> Is this best or worst? We now, t- anyway, we turn to our foreign correspondent. I just really wanted to say that in an accent. Accent? Fuck. I've had a mare. <laughs> Best and worst love songs. Let's, yeah. Let's yeah, have yeah. a guess. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a guess. Thinking Out Loud, Ed Sheeran. That's going to be one of your worst. It absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah. My um, legs don't work like they used to before. <laughs> one of the all time worst lyrics. Well,. It's- there's some videos going around on TikTok that are <laughs> certainly incriminating. <laughs> um, on a on a combat that, but the 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 cliche, the all timer. Yeah, my heart will go on by Celine Dion. That'd be in the worst. That isn't the worst. Yeah, yeah. It's just overused. Yep. Corny. Corny. And too much tin whistle. And I say that as someone who doesn't <laughs> mind a bit of tin whistle, you know. But t- have tap the brakes, Celine. Yeah. Just it's a bit Titanic for me. Yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> You know. Let's continue with the worst then while we're here. Well, okay. Yep. Yeah, continue with the worst. Just yeah. the way you are, Bruno Mars. Ooh, I actually don't mind that song. Well, I don't mind it either. Yeah. But the overuse. Oh, way overused. Mm. Way overplayed. It's like, think of any American movie where they've just broken up, but they realize they love each other. Mm. And he's running to her door. Mm. Bruno Mars is playing. Yeah. Tracy, it was always you. I was blind. I didn't know the love that was right in front of me. Please take me back. You love Tracy, don't you? Oh, I said Tracy in your bits before, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just have a fascination with Tracy Grimshaw, apparently. Uh, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> um, hey. Put in the grim and Tracy Grimshaw over there, Sam. Um, I, um, I'll cop that. Yeah, I don't mind just the way you are about Brenda Mars, but... I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. That was nearly in my list. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> It's the fact that he's playing a ukulele. As soon as they start with the ukulele, you need to get it and yeet it yep. as far as you can. It's been yat. It's been <laughs> yeeted or yat. It's well, I guess it's drank and drunk. Yeah, one of them's like um, imperfect, imperfect past tense. That one's perfect past tense, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah. Let's not go down there. But yeah, I'm not. yours. Fucking throw it out the door. <sighs> Fucking you're absolutely not mine. I'll tell you that much. No, uh, I've got nothing compares to you, Sinead O'Connor. Oh. Fun story, sidebar. <laughs> I was recently, Here without revealing where I work, uh, I was recently <laughs> at an awards ceremony for the industry. Yes. Uh, and they had a um, a valet, you know, like the uh, an in-memoriam section. Isn't it called a veil? 
No, a veil. <laughs> this is mind blowing. I've been calling it a veil. <laughs> veil. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, and uh, <laughs> the in memoriam section, if you will. Yes. And Sinead O'Connor obviously died recently. Uh, yep. And that, so she was within that time period. I think it was like the previous twelve months from like October or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, so they they played. Uh, my heart will uh, no, my heart will go. Sorry, um, nothing, nothing compares, compares to, to you. you. Yeah, shit song. Which the song is fine, but again, overplayed, cliche. Yeah, and um, the other problem is that, like, in the industry, mm. you know, you've got some big names and you you've do. got some very small names. You know, yeah. um, and it was really <laughs> there was a lot of comparison between those two. So you'd go from a, a big name to mm-hmm. a little name, and everyone'd be like, "Oh, who's that?" To the nothing point where one person to, at my yeah. table was like. Oh, they're not a they're not an announcer. They were an Uber driver to one of the small people, <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, I don't know if we can say that out loud at the moment." It's a bit insensitive session. given <laughs> the the topic at hand. <laughs> but back to the story. I mean, overused. Yeah, the little falsetto in the chorus. It just mm. when she goes up. Yeah, I, go, I think it's a well. I think it's one of the songs that's like really well written. Like it's a like mm. as a structure of a song is very good. Multiple writers probably. No, I think it was just Prince. I think Prince is the only one who... I think he just wrote that song. Uh, it's actually Sinead O'Connor. Oh, sorry. Um, and... Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, Play on. But, uh, yeah, I think... Song, strong song, when that recording of it's been a bit overdone. I think so. Yeah. it's. It just reminds me of introducing love songs from the 80s. <laughs> a four-track mix. <laughs> For you and your special someone, for just nineteen ninety nine, get three free CDs, including Best of Country, <laughs> Best of Rock, and Best of Pop. Ring now and receive our... <laughs> and it just goes on. Buy now on cassette or CD. Buy now on cassette or CD. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And get a free window washer. Yo. Okay, I'm going to wrap my last yep. worst. Wrap uh, it up. Love is in the air. John Paul Young. Oh, yeah, that's shit. Again, I think strong song, done to death. Strictly Ballroom, absolutely tore it apart. Yeah. Every, like, they'll wheel out John Paul Young for every and any event. Yeah. Again, yeah, I don't hate the song. It's just, I'm sick of hearing it. It's not great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll round it out. Yeah, please. You are so beautiful, Joe Cocker. Oh. You know why? Because Joe Cocker is a weird dude, or was a weird dude. Well... I don't know if Joe he's, Cocker dead. I don't know if he's in memoriam or oh, Vale or if he's just down the road at uh, I think he might be, but. the local Eagle Boys. Yeah. But uh because every time I hear that song, I just think of Alfalfa singing it from Little Rascals. Oh, of course. You know that Joe Cocker's he's dead. Yeah, so he's in memorial. Yeah. Or in the ground. He's uh he died ten years ago, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time ago. We were really paying attention. I was in year four. Um uh, but all I think of is you seen the movie? Mm. Like that. You are so beautiful. You could probably pass as alfalfa for a little bit. Uh, well, if I've got enough hair gel. For a, for an upcoming costume party that we've got, I actually came up with a really good idea for you that might be semi-insulting. I'll talk to you about that off the top Okay, we'll take that offline. Yeah. Uh, we'll circle back and take it offline. Yeah, well, I just don't think it's appropriate for the media. It won't moment. move the needle, you know? No, I just think when we're talking top line, yeah. uh, that's probably above the line and we just need to keep top line. Exactly. Let's, let's what the fuck does above the line mean, by the way? Well, you know, it's, it's just not, not below the line, you know? It's been tabled. I'll tell you what. People say that around the office... Corporate speak can get fucked. Oh, I love don't understand it. it. I love it. I use it all the time just to get out of any sticky situation, but I hate it. I understand what take it off line means, but above the line, fuck me, I've got no idea. <laughs> they say, oh, well, that's it. We'll see how we go. And then, you know, anything above the line, we'll, we'll renegotiate or we'll <laughs> look back on. I'm like, I understand renegotiate and look back on. Above, what's above, where is the line? I've, I mean, I What's often spend a lot it? of time beyond the line. Like, I've crossed the line a lot of the time, especially in a work context. And HR have told me to, to stop doing that. Stop crossing the line. Yeah, stop crossing yeah, the line. Yeah, well, but, you get that on the big jobs. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I'm just like, above and, like, if you say above and beyond, extras. Is that what it means? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Fuck. I don't think anyone knows. I think... If you're a, if you're a CEO, let us know. Well, I know. I know one quite close to home, but... <laughs> If you're listening, help! All right, best best love songs, Sam. Best best yeah. love songs. So these are written you. Yeah, you probably won't resonate with too many of them, but That's I'll okay. start with one that you might. Daniel Caesar and 
Uh, it is Daniel Caesar, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knew it. I uh, get you by Daniel Caesar. Okay. Good love song. Okay. Yep. That's beautiful. Yeah. What about you? Thanks. Um, Beyond by Leon Bridges. Yeah. Don't know it. It's uh, it's lovely, and Leon Bridges just like damn silky smooth. Mm. Mm. Did he do Texas Sun? Yeah, with Krungbin. Yeah. Yeah. Good wildlife sanctuary, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Niche. Very. <laughs> That's a good Southeast Queensland reference to the boys and girls. Yeah, not even our Sydney listeners, which actually shout out our Sydney listeners because there's a fair few of them. Yeah, shout they've out to overta- Emma. That's the only one that I know of. Well, they've been giving us a lot of love on TikTok. I was looking at the demographic split. Right. Uh, and we're actually split quite evenly. That's good. We probably shouldn't talk our statistics live on air. No, because it's not. Uh, yeah, it's... Oh, sorry, <laughs> just went into screen server mode. Uh, technology, eh? So, yeah. Carumban. Yeah. Um, and then Daniel Caesar. So it's my turn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, slow dancing in a burning room, John Mayer. When you said slow dance, I was like, ooh, could go in the dark. Well, I always get them confused, but I've gone the John Mayer one. Slow mm. dancing in a burning room. Honorable mention for my worst was going to be Your Body is a Wonderland from John Mayer. I really hate that song. I hate that song so much. Yeah. It's not, a, not one of his best. No. But I've got Slow Dancing in a Burning Room, one of John Mayer's best songs. Stronger. Much stronger. Much stronger. Is that off Continuum? Yes. Right. It's about the only saving track on there. I I mean I'm not the biggest John Mayer fan, but you know. It's a good song. It's alright. It's of the of his, I'll listen to that one. My dear, can't you see? I don't want to slow dance in the dark in a burning room. I feel touch. Right. Don't delete the kisses by Wolf Alice. Yeah, see fucking straight over my head. I almost guarantee you would have heard that song. I feel like I would have shown it to you. You know, we'd been driving along one night and I would have looked just kind of longingly into your eyes. And When do we drive at night together? Well, just romantically from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> I offer to pick you up every time we come to the studio and you go, no thanks. <laughs> I'm like, mate, I drive past you. <laughs> <laughs> Let the record show, I offer. Does he come on board? No. I've seen the way you drive. Safely. <laughs> <laughs> Two you, hands. You don't wear a seatbelt one time. Nine and three. <laughs> Six and twelve. Um, all right. What's your? What's your? I oh know. We've got two. You got two more, I believe. I do. Yep. Because you've got one more. I've got one more. Yeah. Uh, I've got Need You by Emmanuel. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good song. Yeah. Shout Don't out Emmanuel. I have no idea what it is. It's a great song. Love. Okay. Play it to your SO one day. What? What genre? Uh, it's a bit soul. It's a bit R and B. Okay. The man's got pipes. Got pipes. Pipes. Yeah. He's he's a plumber. Nice. Pipes down. Yeah. Anyway, your last one. Uh, I'm going for an old school oh, classic. Yeah. yeah. Islands in the Stream. Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton. Beautiful song. Yeah, right. Written by the Bee Gees. Absolute Is that belter. the one from The Office that uh, Jim and Michael do together? Quite potentially. You are stretching my office you memory can't here. Explain, feel no pain. There's something going on. Not that song? From the... Point four of a decibel mumble that you gave me. I couldn't quite tell. I don't know the words enough to sing it confidently. Uh, You'll be able to listen back. Yeah. I'll, and then you can insert yourself here going, Yes, Sam, that is the song you were singing. Have this. I'll, I'll, hang on. Yeah. Nah. Oh. I'll pick one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so rounding it out. Yeah. I've, I've recently come back to this song and I genuinely have it in one of my all time, as one of my all time favorite songs. Yeah. I like it that much. It's mm. in my all-time playlist on Spotify. Wow. There's about 20 songs in there, but it's, yeah. it's one of them. And it's a band you're familiar with, Coldplay. Yep. Have a guess. Yellow. No. S- Strawberry Swing? What the fuck is that? It's a really good song off of uh, Viva La Vida. No. Very good love song. Honorable mention for a good love song. Well, that's your fourth. I've got Sparks by Coldplay. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. All time. Yeah, that's a good song, actually. Great song. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I haven't thought about that song in a while. Good it's song. a great song. Very good song. Makes you sad, makes you happy, makes you feel in love, makes you feel pain. Yeah. It's that perfect mix. So that depending is. on what you're doing on Valentine's Day, yeah. it's the song for you. It's <laughs> or if you like Joji, he'll make you depressed. <laughs> so if dinner doesn't go well, meet Filthy Frank. <laughs> anyway. Now, Sam, before we get to our, our interview um, mm. today... I've just she is waiting for us to shut the fuck up. I don't know. There's a lot of swearing in this. Being on the line, put in random expletive noises. Uh, you and I, we, we finished recording last week. 
We did. Um, and for whatever reason, I decided to put on the Doom soundtrack. You did. And we both had a bit of a rock out and we went, fuck, it actually holds up as a pretty good soundtrack. And It's pretty hefty. It's fucking thick. It's not bad. You really wrap your hands around it, you know? Really hurt your wrist, Sam. Um, so that got us thinking. What's a couple of good video game soundtracks that that we we've, we've loved playing along to? Yeah. Well, I hard just, mode. <laughs> Can I just say, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna insert myself here mm. and just say. Get me dinner first. Oh, we're getting very off topic here. There are some innuendos that. It's a little bit unprofessional. I'd like to take that conversation offline and let's just bring it back down to the line, shall we? Let's do it. Let's move the needle. Let's move the needle. I'm really keen to just get the ball rolling here mm. and then let's have an ideation session and I think things will snowball. Mm. But at the moment, we're probably just over the mark. We're overstepping. My entire job is ideation sessions, actually. Yeah. It's weird. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for video games. I just thought... On behalf of the viewers and the, the listeners who might be a bit offended by your your vulgarity. Don't know what you're talking about. That's all been cut. Let's just... <laughs> <laughs> um, like no, a... we are talking some of the best video game soundtracks. We yes. thought we'd make it a bit harder for ourselves. Yep. Uh, you can't go any of the classics. You can't go. FIFA. Yeah, you can't go. Uh, Doom. Yep. You can't go Grand Theft Auto. GTA. And you can't go... Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. And also Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Yeah, that was my rule. And fuck, I wish I didn't say that. <laughs> but it's fair because I would have gone with probably Underground 2. Yep, that's fine. That's Maybe. It's, yeah, it's that's good. fine. You know, that's, good. that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, right. That's No, that's fine, honestly. Did you wanna, do you want to start us off? I've got yeah. two. You got two? Uh, well, no, you've got two. I've got one. Great. So I think you should sandwich it. I'll sandwich you. So you go before, I'll go middle, and you go in. You're the bread, and I'm the, the delicious treat in the middle. Um, Fallout, obviously. Never played it. Wow, you're missing out on one of the all-time great series. Um, I'm not that big a gamer. Fallout, Fallout absolutely great RPG. Uh, walking around the, the deserted wastes after a nuclear apocalypse. And uh, you know what goes really well with the nuclear apocalypse? 40s and 50s. 40s and 50s. Uh, Said no one ever. Big band jazz and swing, oh, and it is awesome. That's a niche of you. Think, think people like Dean Martin. Think Frank Sinatra. Mm. Really, Belton Belton tunes that really do stack up because as you're wandering around, just blowing people's heads off. It's just the most upbeat, weird, vibey tunes that you've probably never heard part of this song, like play play, play song playing in the game. I'll have to play that. Yeah. Uh, I've brought a bit of old school. Oh yeah, Tetris, <laughs> Pong actually. Oh. <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah, and <laughs> didn't Brian Eno do a good job? <laughs> uh, Need for Speed Underground Two. Oh, that did have a belting soundtrack. It was <laughs> belting soundtrack. Did you go Tony Hawk's Underground Pro Skater Two? No. Need for Speed no, Underground well, Two. <laughs> Let me talk you through my process. Please. It's a four-step process. It will integrate over a, a sort of six to eight-week period. Four-phase rollout. Four-phase four rollout. Yeah. Uh, that's a little bit advanced for my uh, company. <laughs> uh, we don't do four-phase uh, four rollouts. Right. But I did a... It was a three-pronged attack yeah. when breaking down this system. Three pillars. Three, well, yeah. And we can't be siloing. Yeah. Well, no. 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 Each team's got to integrate and work together. Oh. Collaborate 100%, 100%. to reach the you know the budget for this month. So, exactly. Uh, when I approached Need for Speed Underground Two, I, I had looked at a competitor analysis. I looked at the Rugby 06 soundtrack. Mm. Uh, I looked at the Rugby 08 soundtrack. You must have a fair bit of Rugby O something. R- looked at the Rugby 04 soundtrack. <laughs> rugby 99 was a little bit far fetched. Yeah. I looked at AFL. I AFL at, Live 03. Yeah, that was banging. Yeah. It wasn't. No. Uh, but I landed on Need for Speed Underground 2 because as a kid, yep. I used to love it. And yep. there were some songs that were instantly recognizable. Yep. The Riders on the Storm mm. remix, Snoop Dogg and The Doors. Yep. Yep. That's just that's just the menu song. That's a belter. That's a great start. Then you've got this really good mix of like electronic music and heavy. Who knew me and heavy music, hey? <laughs> but for a racing game, it went stupidly hard. It gave some slap. Let me rattle off some uh, bands that featured on it. Give us a, give For us a starters, spin. 
Black Betty by Spider Bait. Oh. Imagine driving your Mitsubishi Lancer down the highway. A pixelated, of, 1080 graphics. Bit of Samba Lamb over there. Samba Lamb. Yeah, Black Betty Bamba Lamb or yeah. whatever it's called. Not even their song. No. Yeah, it took me a while to figure that one out. It's a, it, It's been covered, covered many times. Yeah. I by think, Spider Bait. Yeah. Uh, but we got Ministry. Mm. Skin Dread. Mm. And I assume they only had one. Nobody, yeah. Yeah. It's a great song. I've, I've never gone back to think. It's a niche genre. I was going to say, I've never gone back to think, geez, I wonder what other songs I can no, dig out knows of the discography. That song? Yeah. Uh, so we're saying, oh. <laughs> no one goes, hey, put that Skin Dread album on. Put the other Chumbawamba song on. <laughs> yeah. Chumbawamba, wow. Yeah. If you're listening, come on the show. Uh, Rise Against was on it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know the song. It wasn't Saviour. No. But. There was just a great mix. I don't recognise any of the DJs that were on it, but okay. f- Foot to the Floor <laughs> by literally and audio based. 100%. Yeah. Sandwich me. Sandwich you. My one, look, I'm going to say this one isn't a soundtrack per se. Okay. But I'd like to think that it could be yeah, because yeah. I think, so I think he's set I, his own rules and then go on. Whoop. You know me. I'll have a preface. <laughs> nah, um, this is a song I wrote. These are the the the, face. the the music in this game. I think yeah. would make a good remix. Like you, put, I can see it in a dance right, like in a dance hall in a rave, something like that. It must be because you've just cut some shapes with your hands. <laughs> the Pokemon Red and Blue soundtrack, the original, like from Game Boy, like because you spend so much time in that game listening to the songs on loop because you're in Pokemon battles and stuff like that. You're in the mm. same like towns, so you hear them over and over again. And they just get in your head, and I think someone there needs to be. It probably exists. You're so excited, you stumbled over your words. <laughs> it probably exists that there's like a, a good rave remix version of it, and uh, I could see myself just, just, just in the club. Just, you need them. Th- just pump and fist, <laughs> trying to trying to capture me. You two, just oots, 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 pumping oots. fist. Yeah. How does he feel? Anything wrong with that? No, just yeah, great. Uh, well, on that note, I've got an extra one. Yeah, please. Uh, the Wii Sports soundtrack. <laughs> Gee whiz. Yeah. You could cut more shapes in an arms factory to that. Oh, mate. I've, it's unlocking memories deep within the recesses of my brain. Oh, when you do the bowling and you've unlocked 100 pins. Oh, incredible stuff. Goated. Go to with the sauce, Sam. Well, yeah. It's based, not cringe. <laughs> I'm not with the hip, Neither am I, the hip really. youth of today. Uh, but anyway, look before we throw it to any girl. Uh, yes, if you've got, if you want to talk about some of your favorite video game soundtracks or Valentine's Day tracks, best or worst, where where should you hit us, Sam? Where should you get on to to talk to us? Uh, hit us above the belt, above um, the line, above the line, and yep. you can actually don't take this offline. Keep it online. So at seventy eight amped on TikTok, Spotify, uh, Instagram. Twitch, uh, Beam the scooter app. Um, Not Beam the 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 app where you, like your housemates trade money. No, no, no. I don't have housemates. No, uh, <laughs> renting. <laughs> I've just alienated half my audience there. The liberal voter over here. <laughs> I don't know. It's just what Dad did. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, anyway, uh, Instagram. Uh, not really Facebook YouTube I'm really bad at this At least three of those Are true There's a plethora of choices Just get them right <laughs> Exactly And you'll find us You know Google Images Google Yeah Spotify Apple Podcasts Yeah Deezer Rates Reviews Give us some of those Yeah it Helps us climb the charts Anyway Look I sat down with any girl um, Perth <coughs> Pop Artist, really one of those mm. artists that sits across a lot of genres. Hard to hard to like put into one box. So it's a big fence, huge, huge fence. So I'm gonna just throw straight to myself. We're joined uh, by Raya Lee, who many of our listeners would know better uh, as Any Girl. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> we we like to kick off the the podcast the same way each week uh, by finding out what you're listening to. So in Spotify, Apple Music, what have you been kind of listening to on your playlists? Me? Yeah. Um, at the moment, um, I'm been listening to a lot of Blusher. Okay. Um, a lot of Wolf Alice. They're a mainstay on my <laughs> Spotify. I'm checking my Spotify now. Um, or Laurel's new song. 
with Keita Alexander all night. That's a good one. And what else? Um, I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything <laughs> important. Um, I'm not going to lie. Taylor Swift is in there. <laughs> Look, I, I, we, we recorded another episode earlier this evening and I was the only one on the call that was like, no, nah, I back it. I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. And it yeah. looked like I was just getting stared daggers by everyone else. So, Oh, do you know what? I don't give a shit. But like, <laughs> I I actually, like, I slept on her for so long. Like, I think just because, you know, she was so big, she was so popular. And like, I've, I've always, most of the time I've been into more like uh, independent or alt pop. Um, when it comes to pop music as opposed to like the really really big commercial pop and like I have a bunch of friends that are like really big Taylor Swift fans and um they were like trying to sell me on it (laughs) and they like made me listen to like all their music and I was like yeah like it's good but I don't know like it doesn't like it's not like sparking anything in me at, at this point in time and then like I randomly just decided to listen to it in the car on the way to work one day. And there must have just been one song that I was like, damn, this is actually a really good pop song. And then I like kind of started diving into the never ending pool of Taylor Swift songs. And (laughs) I don't love all, I don't love all of them, but um, there's definitely a lot of, a lot of good pop songs in there. So yeah, I'm a ta- I'm a Swifty newbie. I wouldn't call myself a Swifty, but yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> I always find like she, I, I mean, obviously like the songwriting's incredible, but I always yeah. find that the way that she, especially on the albums where she's going heavy with like the like the the synths and stuff like that, yeah. the way that she layers everything is just really well done. And whether that maybe that's like yeah. Jack Antonov getting in there as well, oh, but the there, legend, it's, yeah, like, it's <laughs> everyone's so like well songwriting produced. dream, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's yeah. a that's an eclectic mix that you've got there. So, is it? That's my straight up pop mix. <laughs> you you should hear all the other shit that I listen to. <laughs> I mean, for a pop mix, going you know going from Wolf Alice to to Laurel to Taylor Swift. I mean, you're not going to see oh, that in wow. too many other playlists. I feel. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting because that's like that's my pop music playlist that I would listen to, and then I've got all my other stuff like Metallica and. Silverchair and Pink Floyd and, you know, all of my bands that I've listened to for, like, my whole life as well. So I, what, I am a Gemini. <laughs> Many personalities. What would be your, like, you've, 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 just, you've just come home from work, you're like, oh, I need to kick back and, like, relax. Is it is it straight into the uh, into the metal or are you you're sort of sitting in that pop space for a bit? Do you know what? I don't listen to music when I get home. <laughs> That's going to sound really bad. But because of where I work, I get to listen to headphones all day. So I listen to either music or podcasts like all day. And then when I get home, it's friends. (laughs) I put friends on the TV like straight away. Um, But yeah, I honestly, I just, it changes. Like I go through so many different phases and yeah, so like the bands that I mentioned to you off the top of my head, that's like the phase that I'm in at the moment is like those bands. But um, I do, I definitely, it, like if I'm in a really sad mood, I will put Metallica on because they instantly make me feel better. Metallica <laughs> or Motley Crue. <laughs> oh, I mean, no one's ever been sad listening to Motley Crue, ever. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I feel like it's, you can't take it seriously so it's instantly like gonna make you feel good <laughs> I, I back that that's a good call yeah, exactly it's just like good fun yeah. <laughs> well i mean let's let's talk uh, any girl for a sec i suppose mm-hmm. uh your latest track is talk about you um and it's it's a feel good belter and it tells the world to, to fuck right off mm-hmm. where where did it start life where what was kind of the, the catalyst that spo- to spawn that for you it it really was just a conversation that me and Alice Ivy and uh, Veda Bourne were having in our um, session. We were like, what should we write a song about? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, like, as you do, you just end up, like, talking about life. And then I think one of them had um, had a breakup over, over in the last year or so and they were talking about their experience with that person and then I kind of was like oh my god I know someone like that as well and then 
yeah, we all just kind of started bitching about those people in life that never seem to realize that they're only ever talking about themselves or thinking about themselves, you know. That's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's interesting that you brought up sort of Alice Ivy and Veda Bourne there because, you know, you've previously mentioned that they were sort of um, very instrumental in, in how this song came to be and it sort of started out life in a songwriting camp. Mm. Um, how... How important has, especially like songwriting camps and jams and those kind of things, been for you as a songwriter? You know, starting out with a variety of tracks. Um, it's at, that was actually the first and only songwriting camp I've ever been on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it like it was definitely instrumental for this track for sure, and it was an amazing experience. And like I, I highly, highly rate it. Um. Just I, th- I think especially for someone like me who's based in Perth, like Perth is so isolated and unless you already know people in the industry like over east, like it's so hard to make those connections. And so KLP inviting me to be a part of that camp really was like opened doors uh, for me to uh, producers and other artists that are in a similar realm of music that my I'm making with my solo stuff um, that are in the Eastern States, because like before that, I, all of my music was drum and bass and like, yeah, I know loads of people in the drum and bass industry, like in the Eastern States and other countries, but like, that doesn't really help you if you want to make pop music, (laughs) (laughs) you know? Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. We've been finding a lot of the, uh, you know, especially pop artists, obviously, that we've been in- interviewing lately, songwriting camps have become so, um, like, uh, ubiquitous, I guess, in terms of how everyone mm-hmm. is, is like, like so many songs are starting out in that space. And do you think it's because it's so fast paced that you feel like, like th- there's so much going on that it just, it adds a certain kind of, I don't know, like X factor to, to the songwriting process that yeah. makes the songs come faster? I think so. I think when you've got a time limit, it's like you can't take things too seriously when you've got a one day. So when with the camp that I was on, it was one day, one track, and and you finish the track by the end of the day. And when you've got that kind of time limit, you can't get bogged down in like the nitty gritty or being like, yeah, but this could be tweaked and that could be better. Like you're just like, yeah, do you know what? that's good enough for now, let's roll with it and see where the idea goes. And I think as for someone like me, like when I produce on my own, that's something I really struggle with because like I'm, I am a hyper focus girl. (laughs) (laughs) So like I've got ADHD and when I get into like one facet of production, I'll be like, oh, you know, like I just want to perfect this, gated reverb on this snare and like (laughs) I could easily just spend like way too long on that one tiny thing and it's not actually conducive to like songwriting when you just want to get those ideas out so I think yeah in in that collaborative space and this is why I love co-writing so much I just find it so much more enjoyable um but yeah like having that time limit limit definitely helps because it's like well you know we've got to finish it by the end of the day so like who gives a shit about the gated reverb like let's just get the idea down (laughs) gated reverb can come later (laughs) yeah exactly do you think i mean you you mentioned perth being so isolated do you think that uh there's space for you know a um an any girl helmed uh songwriting camp assembling there's obviously a lot of talent in the west um it's not like there's a lack of collaborators to work with is it just the infrastructure have you been reading my thoughts (laughs) 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 yes there absolutely is Uh, it's and it's something that i would love to organize um i have a lot of ideas around what i would like to do in the perth music scene um probably too many ideas um at the moment i'm trying to like narrow it down to like what is most important and what can i do now um but yeah i think there there needs to be more um opportunities like that for people in perth because um as far as i've seen they they really don't exist at at least on definitely not on the same level that they do for people in other states 
you know, like even all of the APRA songwriting, like all the song hubs, they're all over East. Like you might get once in a blue moon, there might be something in WA, but most of the time it's all um, in other states. And, you know, it's like 70% of the applicants that get to go up have to be based in that state. And then it's like, oh yeah, well, we'll offer like three spots to someone who's out of state. So there's like, that's pretty high competition yeah to get into you know especially when you have to then fund especially if you know a small upcoming artist has to find their way to get to sydney melbourne wherever yeah 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 it's like um i mean i think the APRA ones they they pay for the flight but you know like when it comes to any other any songwriting camp they might not be able to pay for you to get over there so um i'm pretty sure i funded for myself to go to klp uh, don't quote me on that i'm not 100 sure <laughs> i want um, receipts it's fine it's fine <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah like it's it's fucking hard like being in perth is so hard like i'm not gonna lie like i am just gonna whinge about it because <laughs> it sucks look i mean it it sucks but also when when everyone on the east coast sits down and goes there's so much good shit coming out of the west like it's such a good little like self-contained scene where artists oh, it's, from all it's sorts nice of genres that like, support each that. other i feel like we don't hear that <laughs> <laughs> like we, we had no idea that that's what you think <laughs> i was literally the, the same interview as i was talking about before we it came up that uh yeah the, the stuff coming out of out of perth at the moment is is just its own little world that um, oh that's good yeah. yeah and that and that is definitely something like i've spoken to my brother about this before how sometimes isolation you know it can have um it's benefits in the fact that you are you do have this little bubble and you can kind of experiment and explore within that world without kind of being too influenced by what's going on around you or distracted by what's going on around you um so yeah there's definitely pros and cons and you know like we do have pretty good beaches. <laughs> <laughs> you got to you got to the winds when you can get them. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. <laughs> and we have spearmint milk. You guys don't have spearmint milk. <laughs> I mean, that sounds horrendously disgusting. So it's so good. <laughs> I'll leave. I'll tell you what. You guys can keep the spearmint milk, and um, I will. I will. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to that one. <laughs> um, you touched on it before. You know, you've 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 been in the music industry before doing drum and bass producing both solo and, you know, with collaborators as well. When you were setting out to start the any girl project, what in your mind sort of set aside the work you wanted to do here with like your previous um, releases and, and, and collaborations? Um, like you mean like, why did I decide to start a whole new name and a whole new project and stuff? Potentially or, or what yeah. even like you felt, what were the limits that you wanted to put on yourself in terms of what you were going to produce as any girl? Absolutely none. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I started it. Because I think, um, you know, with when you make drum and bass, um, drum and bass has rules. um, And, you know, for good reason, that's what makes it drum and bass. Um, And I think a lot of genres there, there's, it comes with like certain rules or formulas that you have to follow, like, you know, has drum and bass has to be like you know 170 175 bpm if you make house it's got to be like oh what's house 125 130 i don't know i don't listen to house music um (laughs) and you know even rock music like it has to like follow almost a certain formula but i feel like with pop music there are essentially there's no rules like you can follow a formula and there there are proven like formulas of what works for like a good top line and stuff like that but you can literally you can use whatever instrument you want you can make it at whatever tempo you want and that's why i decided to start you know a new pop project because i was like i don't i don't want to have to be constrained by certain rules and i i want to be able to make an 80s synth pop track inspired by tears for fears if i want to and then for the next song do a country ballad <laughs> i mean the classic the, the classic put together <laughs> exactly <laughs> i mean a lot of the you've released you know a, a fair few tracks now we've got um a few out in the world and 
some of them, as you said, kind of sit in like almost like an indie rock world. Some of them mm. would be just as would a bordering almost electronica and and that kind of world that you obviously mm-hmm. know so well. When you you sat down and thought, um, there's a whole range of instrumentation and genres and textures that you can explore um, with the project. What were the ones that you were probably most excited to get your hands on, and what would be the the most surprising kind of influences that um, have ended up in informing your tracks? Yeah, um, I think I think I had I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted to do with this project um, when I started it, and I've always had like a bit of a penchant for the eighties and um, eighties synth sounds and eighties drums. So I knew that it would have those influences in it. Um, And, but I think maybe what surprised me was um, how it turned into a more organic thing. Like when I started playing with my band, um, like with a drummer and a guitarist, because like I used to play in metal bands like before I started um, music professionally, like I grew up in rock and metal. So, and then I started playing um, with those guys again for my Any Girl project. And I was like, man, I really miss like just having guitars and kind of like <laughs> being able to rock out and stuff. So um, that was probably, that was a bit of a surprise for me realizing that I actually wanted to bring some of those roots back into it. Um, and I think you can probably hear that in um, Too Far Gone. That's like probably my most guitar rock heavy track. It's definitely not rock, <laughs> but it has, that's, it has the influence in there. Um, but yeah, I think that that will definitely get stronger in my work that I'm writing now as well. Um, I'm finding myself a lot more inspired kind of like by going back to basics, so to speak. Um, for a long time, I've, I've written music like almost completely software based. Um, and then I kind of have to translate it into a band setting and it's, um, a pain in the ass, (laughs) (laughs) um, to like make it work. And so I'm, yeah, now I'm realizing like, why am I, why am I writing music on a computer when I could just go back to basics and write it with my band, you know? So that's kind of where I'm at, um, for my following release that will come after my album. (laughs) <laughs> Are you, does that mean that uh there's a lot more sitting down strumming a guitar maybe playing on a piano or something like that something that's got a, a bit more like how, how much is starting out acoustically i guess and then how much is sort of and then layering the, yeah on top of it i think um so at the moment the tracks that i'm working on i weirdly they've all started with a vocal melody which is a first for me because i've always <laughs> like i'm a top liner i'm I'm usually someone who has like, you know, give me the music bed and I'll hear a top line melody over the top. Um, And that's usually how I've worked. But weird, I don't know why, but over the last six months, I've just been having like these vocal melody ideas like pop into my head out of nowhere. And I've been starting with the vocal. So lately I've just been like um, putting the vocal down in my door and then maybe like working um, just some working out the drum beat and what chords I want it to be in the door and then taking it to my guitarist and being like, what can we do with this skeleton and like kind of go from there. Um, But yeah, I think it will definitely be a lot more jam written than it would be me sitting you know, slaving away in front of a computer and then trying to get a band to play an electronic song. Have you yeah. felt like when you, you know, if, if you're starting with that vocal hook and you take it to the band and then they kind of interpret that and go a different direction, you're like, everyone, what the fuck's going on here? This is not the not where it was going originally. <laughs> it ha- hasn't happened yet. <laughs> like it's been more the other way around. Like I'll, I'll say to my guitarist, like, so this is the vocal melody that I've got. And these are the chords that I'm hearing behind it. And he'll, pl- and then I'm like, but you tell me if you hear anything else, like it is, you know, what kind of chord, what else could you play underneath? And he's like, 
no, I think what you've got is pretty good. <laughs> like, he's like, I don't think, I can't hear anything else that would sound better than that. So let's just go with that. But yeah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> there, might, there might be a mutiny one day. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Uh, another question we had, especially off the back of talk about you, is it's I mean, and and the project broadly is sort of sitting in what we've been kind of talking about in the sh- on the show is like this kind of female led almost hyper pop sound that's like having a real surge at the moment. You know, artists like Caroline Polachek, Chapel Roan, they're all dropping mm-hmm. massive albums. Um, and you mentioned before that you kind of started in this world of alt pop, and and obviously you had metal and electronic roots as well. What do you think is the the catalyst that's kind of bringing all these artists that clearly are sampling from like very off mainstream genres mm. into the mainstream with with such big hits? I have no idea, but I'm here for it. <laughs> like I've been waiting for this day for so long. <laughs> like I've been waiting for a time when it was just like cool to like pop music. And I feel like I spent a very long time in my career where it wasn't cool to like pop music. Um, but yeah, I agree. I feel like it's just become so much more um, accessible and people are just like, yeah, this, this banks, like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I really have no idea why, um, but I'm pretty stoked about it. <laughs> Look, it's a good time to be. It's a good time to be dealing in pop music. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I only just realised the other day that, like, Caroline Polachek, who I've you know been listening to and in I'm in awe of. Like, she's so amazing. My brother sent me a video the other day and was like, "Did you know that she was the singer in Chairlift?" And I was like. <laughs> I had no idea that she was from Chairlift and I was like hell into Chairlift like when they had their little, um, their breakout track. So I was like, no wonder I like her so much. <laughs> it just makes you, it, it reminds you that like no one blows up out of anywhere. You yeah. know, no artist, or well, very rarely does an artist just blow up and it's like, yeah, I just like wrote one song and then I got famous, you know. It's like... They have been working at it for a very long time. So I think it's something that's really important for all artists to keep in mind when, you know, whenever you feel like you're flogging a dead horse. <laughs> the the <laughs> decades like, of plugging away in, in a band yeah, somewhere. Yeah, and... exactly. And it all it all builds to something. Like even if a certain project like has um, has its time and you decide like, oh, that's, we're not going to do that anymore. Like everything that you've learned in that project is going to be applied into your new work as well. So like nothing is ever a waste of time. hundred percent. That's, yeah. that's, you know, if, if there's any artists out there that are starting out or, or wanting to restart their career, that's a good, that's a good shout. Yeah. <laughs> Before we let you go, uh, you know, new music often means uh, heading to a stage to to play it live. Are we going to see an Any Girl tour heading around the country anytime soon? I don't know about a tour. <laughs> Tours are expensive, especially if you come from Perth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if anyone wants to like book me in the Eastern States, I'm totally down to do it. Um, but yeah, I'm playing at uh my friend's single launch on the 1st of march um for his band height um and then i'm also i don't know if i'm allowed to announce it yet but i'm going to be playing um uh in geraldton for one of rat salads shows later in the year as well and i'll be singing with um shock one for his album launch on the 3rd of march and I may organize an album launch of my own in April if I can be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> that's always the uh, that's always the case when it comes out of that kind of thing, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it's just like how much time and energy do I really have? But yeah, it is it's something I would like to do if I can if I can manage to um, squeeze it in. I would like to do an album launch. So fingers crossed. 
We'll keep an eye out for the uh, for the announcements. Well, yeah. Any Girl's latest single is Talk About You, uh, out now wherever you get your music. Uh, in terms of, you know, you know, new gigs, if you're in WA, it sounds like there's a couple getting about, but for the rest of us, we might have to wait a little while to uh, see an Any Girl show yeah. in a stage near yes. us. <laughs> <laughs> Raya, thanks so much for, for taking the time out tonight to, uh, to have a chat with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a uh, very good chat. <laughs> happy, don't ask about me. It's not like I got it. Vinyl Club. Welcome to Vinyl Club. What a great interview that was with uh, with Any Girl. Yeah, you did well there. Thank you. What, did, what was your favourite part? Uh, the more detailed, the better. I really liked how you asked her what song she's uh, listening to at the moment. <laughs> What's been spinning in her playlist. Yeah, and I was quite surprised that she said what she said. You, well, <laughs> shocked. Shook it. Well, Shaken. I just want to put it out there. Yeah. On our TikTok this evening, we yeah. put on... Socks and Burks versus your City Beach Vans. And I'd just like to say you're getting thumped 80 to 20. To be fair, my I do have ratty-ass vans on. These are old, old ratty-ass vans. I didn't want to say anything, but they aren't the best I've seen. And, you know, you can't help poor, poor, uh, poor taste. Maybe I need to get you some shoes for your birthday. You definitely don't need to get me Birkenstocks because they would have a, a short shelf life. A short shelf life. Yes, exactly. You don't like Birkenstocks? No, not for me. Thank you. No, that's okay. Anytime. But, but that's you're allowed to like them and that's fine. You're also getting thumped on Instagram, 67 to 33. That's fine. Someone's got to. Oh, no, sorry. It wasn't a comparison. I've actually roasted myself. I said hot or not and it's mainly not. <laughs> Self-burn, they're rare. <laughs> We've <laughs> KO. Um, oh, no, that's okay. Look, Only three people have voted so far. Speaking of, speaking of our socials, um, yes. last week we, we put out to the people um, what songs they'd delete from history. We had our own semi-controversial takes. Turns out I caught a fair bit of heat 
in the personal DMs for suggesting that Stairway <laughs> to Heaven should get deleted. They found you. I knew they would. But I also I had a I'd had a surprising amount of support as well um, from mum and dad. Yeah, and from my from my therapist, and yeah. um and and just the police. Um, when I had to tell people to stop coming around and threatening me, but the police were threatening you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sting. He's got a bit of a temper, doesn't he? <laughs> but uh, so I wanted to to, to to read out some of the um, some of the audience's options. Yeah, and see what you thought. Um, well, we've got the same list. Sure. I you go first. Well, Pedro nine hundred one did back you up with tones and I. Oh, a but lot of people. Su- no, a lot of people supported that. So two people. So Megan came in and said a teacher put it on the lockdown, uh, learning from home curriculum. What? I don't think Megan's making a lot of sense. Well, I think as in for their child. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, maybe that person. I don't know. Well, How moving on. Megan but is? it's a shit song. It's. I'd still rather keep it than uh, 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 stay at heaven. <laughs> Smooth by Santana and Rob Thomas. Yep, got some I get hate that from one. Chris. Completely understand that. Drops of Jupiter by Chain. 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 <laughs> By Train? Uh, I, I gotta say, fuck off. From Great Jess? Song. No, it's not. Anything by Train. Absolute belt. No. 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 There's I'd a say Hey Soul track. Sister. That's a shit can song. Can fuck right off. That can fuck right off. I can agree that can, on that. That but can drops fuck a, sky high. But Drops of Jupiter, I'll allow it. Yeah. So it still holds up. Hotel California? Do, I don't agree. I agree. Because it's an, I put it in the same oh, category as Stairway not, to Heaven. It's no, overdone. It's, it's no, too long. it's not. Like, Quinn. Dance Monkey can fuck right off. Quinn's... No one in the comments said, geez, Max, that's a great take. That's because everyone was just silently nodding their head. You in, keep going. Insensible... I'm going to look in the restricted comments. <laughs> the ones that get flagged. Uh, Odorous oh. Urungus uh, had St. Anger, I'm assuming the, uh, the Metallica album. Yeah, is that when Lars had a, a tin can for a snare? Yeah, it's, it sounds like he's just kicking a keg. It's not good. It's well, not good. I, I agree. I would, I would delete that out of Metallica's discography. But I, I stay with heaven still takes it. I like that Lockie Burton came for you and said, you blokes are taking the piss. And then I came in batting for myself. Yeah, you. I, I want to put it out there. And I said, maybe it's not the song that he's talking about. Maybe he's just like, you guys are fuckheads. <laughs> Separately, just as people. Does Lockie follow us? He Probably. does. Right. Shout uh, out Lockie. Mr. Cadbury with the Zombie. I'm assuming by Cranberries. Um, yeah. Wouldn't delete it. Uh, I see where he's coming from. Overplayed, probably. But I wouldn't delete it. Mm. Teenage Dirtbag, Jay Lyons. Nah, I disagree, Jay. Unfortunately. I saw Lizzie McElpine cover Teenage Dirtbag the other day. Mm. Jeez, it was good. Okay. I'll have to, I'll have to get around that one. Um, I don't know who this guy is. Max Higgins here with, says Galaxy Brain Take. Man, he's on to something, that guy. But love, love you to support in the, um, in the chat. Imagine having to comment a compliment to yourself. <laughs> There's a couple, couple of people who saved it too as... as uh, yeah, you saved it. I I didn't do it. Did we? I don't. Did we put it on Instagram? I think we did. I don't think there are as many captions. Uh, my captions have been comments. No, and that's a shout out because our TikTok's taking off, but Instagram is bending us over and doing unspeakable things to us. So if you can it support us on Instagram, milk. can we just say to our just while we're on the topic of socials, one of our most engaged posts lately mm. has been us reacting to haters. On, I think it was our uh, Towns video. Yes, yes. And this man who is nameless, it's not even just me being polite, because if he's, he had a name, I would tell you. Uh, I got a challenge for you, suggest some good music. To which I was like, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. I've got some good music for you. And? So I said, with arms wide open by Creed, goes hard. Slaps. Oh, f- fucking I. I hate Creed, but it slaps. Well... And higher by Creed, potentially? I like higher in My Sacrifice more than Arms Wide Open. Just because there's a bit more happening. What's the Spider-Man 2 Creed song? Uh, I Am by Killing Heidi. <laughs> um, and then he goes, wow. And then I thought, geez, we're onto something here. We've mended. We've made. We've, we've brought people we've together. We've bridged the gap yeah. and we've made amends. <laughs> and he goes, is it really that hard for you to suggest something good? And then I thought, well... My man's a little bit cranky. He's woken up on the wrong side of the bed. Let me suggest something else that might tickle his fancy. So I said, are you familiar with the works of Chad Kroger? <laughs> and he said, are you familiar with the concept of good music? <laughs> so I thought I'd reach out using our connections and reach out to Nickelback um, and try to get a message of support for our man, Cranky Tim. 
and I, I reached out to Nickelback and I said, My Sacrifice is your best song. We love you. How did... Scene. Oh, left on scene by the, by the NB. And it, it did hurt my feelings. So shout out Chad. My sad Kroger, am I right? Sad Kroger, yeah. Um, and another uh, thing that we got to do in Vinyl Club, I think, yes. I think we've, we've moved this from the main pod to Vinyl Club because well, it makes a lot more sense here. It's an exclusive. Um, Vinyl of the Week. Yes, well, you've brought it this week. I, I don't have, actually know what it is. I, I brought, this is, I'd say, one of my all-time favourite albums, um, especially because this album came out when I was in, in grade 12. Oh, and yeah. there was a lot of late nights studying to this. Um, I'd, I'd illegally downloaded via LimeWire, or maybe uTorrent, one of those two. It's your song by Elton John. It, it is your song by Elton John. Were. Came out in my grade 12, 1977. Yeah. Um, this one is uh, a lot of a lot, a lot of late nights listening on the old iTunes. Yep. Um, to this and also Teenage Dream, uh, not Teenage Dream, California Girls by Katy Perry. Oh, is it Katy Perry vinyl? It's, it? Katy Perry. it's Katy Perry. No, it is. Uh, Foster the People with Torches. Oh, nice. Um, now, this is the deluxe 10th anniversary edition. Wow. So I've, it's not an original pressing. I would have loved the original pressing, but unfortunately, they're very hard to get. Um, this... This, it's I got would, pumped up kicks on it. It's got it? pumped up kicks. It's That's got the only Foster the People song. I, no, whoa! It's got Helena Beat. It's got Houdini. It's got Call It What You Want. Don't stop Color on the Walls. It's got I would say Side A, Side B, which is the original album, the, first, yep. the ten songs, back to back. No, un, nothing worth skipping. I would say ten perfect indie pop tracks. No skips. See, indie pop's not my favorite genre, so I'd probably skip all of them. Fair enough. But, um, I mean, it's a good cover. Great cover. Um, it's it's a slight variation. The original cover, I believe, was the same little figures, but the, the orange was blue. Ooh, okay. Um, maybe purple kind of thing. But <laughs> we're getting into hues there, aren't we? Yes, that's... It was just, a lilac. It's just a matter of perspective. Yeah. But um, a genuinely fantastic record. Uh, the, the original, I would say, 10 non-skippable tracks... Um, and I would love to hear what everyone else th- thinks about that album um, this week. So, will they agree with the the man after his Stairway to Heaven mishap? Or yeah, will they agree with the Dance Monkey Man. For the three people who make it through Vinyl Club, comment. Let us know. Do we ha- can you see that? What do you mean? Can you see the how long people listen? Oh, I, I can. I can dig it up. Yeah, mm. I haven't looked at the actual numbers. Shout out the OGs. Shout out. Shout out to the, the whoever sticks around. Shout out Mum, Max's mum, and my mum definitely doesn't listen. To- I don't no, think she listens does. to the main pod. My mum likes our Instagram content from three weeks ago. She goes, "Oh, I've only just seen it." I'm like, oh. I'll tell you what. Here's why don't this? Yes. Is, if we're going to do this like Vinyl Club, yep. Next week, by by next week, why don't you come back and just give me a, yep, a broad a two sentence thought on the album? Yeah. Just the just the just the first ten songs. You don't have to listen to the whole extended thing. Pumped up kicks was good. <laughs> Rest was shit. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'll listen to it on Spotify. Yeah, and then you can bring one next week and then yeah. we can do this like an actual vinyl club. Yeah, I like that. But we go album for album. It's like book club. Yeah. Yeah. With vinyls. Well, should I give you some homework then? Well, oh, no, no, this is my homework. Yeah, this is your homework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't me. listen to yeah. the question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you get that on the big yeah. job, so. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Great. Well, other than that, 